Hey guys, how's it going? So today I just want to get a bunch of stuff planted. I've had some perennials sitting around in flower beds for the last few days. I just want to get them in the ground and I tend to like to do that just to set the perennials in the spot where I think I want them, live with it for a few days and then you can decide if you want to shift them around a little bit or try something different. I also have some annuals to plant in this kitchen bed, kind of that little area that I always plant up usually with a red coleus and then I would love to make it out to the cut flower garden to plant up the savannah urns. So this is the first flower bed right here things are filling in beautifully I planted more of the porcelain blue corridalis corridalis whatever in here the other night and I want to get these lupins in the ground West Country masterpiece aren't those gorgeous Oh, I think they're such a pretty texture in this flower bed, like from all angles. They just look natural in this flower bed, like they belong here. And what I want to do, and this is why I left them sitting here, is because I didn't know if I wanted to put this one on the to the right of this salmon colored poppy and I do think I want to I think that it makes it look a little less contrived and like a little less blob ish <laughs> that makes sense so that I don't just have, like, have a blob of lupins right there it kind of draws the interest over a little bit which does leave me with a little space right here behind this hedge of lavender that one looks like it's struggling may need to replace that this is Munstead lavender but I thought like a, a small statured either hosta that has some gold color or a, like a carex with some gold would look really pretty. Just something that stays kind of shorter so it doesn't overpower the hookera that are right there. In the flower bed right across the way, this one actually gets a little bit more sun than that other side. But I've got these hookera that I picked up on the day we put in the pondless waterfall. We just ran down and picked up whatever we could find that had some color and I've had these kind of hanging out in this area. In fact, I have three more still around the pond that I wanna go grab because I wanna put another one here and then a couple more right back in here. And these are incredible hydrangeas that do really well right here. But every year I feel compelled to fill in with annuals around them and I just wanted something with some color that was perennial and i think that those are a beautiful look in here next spot with perennials is the kitchen flower bed where we just planted the hookerellas i've got two hostas sitting here i just love hostas in this area when we moved in there was a glorious hosta right where the coast to coast is sitting and it was about that color and then we had that massive hailstorm and i think that that hosta being damaged was probably the most sad of anything that got damaged in my garden i was the most sad about that one because it was such a statement so what we did is it was so shattered and, or shattered tattered i guess is the word i'm after that we cut back all the tattered leaves and it never recovered like it would shoot out one meager leaf and it just like i it ended up fizzling out i haven't even dug it out like i don't even know where it went it just kind of stopped living that was its moment where it was like nope I'm done now that hail just did me in so coast to coast I think will be a beautiful replacement and then I've got a woo la la right here and this woo la la look at that texture so bold and I need it in this space because we've got aster that's a little bit finer textured and a lungwort right here um, there's a Japanese maple and some snowdrop uh, that the bulbs right back in there. Anyway, I just needed kind of this weighty texture in here. And so the woo la la grows quite large. Like I want to say three feet tall and like five feet wide. Anyway, so it'll easily fill in this space right there. And then here are the annuals that I think I'm going to go with in this space this year. Last year I went with Ridiculous, which is beautiful coleus, but very, very red, like very bright. I kind of wanted to go with something a little bit more on the subdued side. I am going to cut the tulips back even though they're not quite yellowed yet. The, they've been up for quite a while, so they'll probably be fine. I'm going to pull the Tritoscantia. I'm trying to get rid of that stuff. It's just everywhere. And then the Japanese anemones, they encroach every year. Like this whole patch is Japanese anemones, and I really love them but I do have to try to keep them out like away from my penstemon and so I'm going to pull like from around my penstemon and pull these right up here and then we're going to fill in this area with three plants. First layer in the back will be Wicked Witch Coleus. They are so beautiful and a little bit of a different look this year while still giving us that wonderful color. Next layer down is going to be Icicles Helichrysum. I planted these next to some Chinook Caladiums last year and just loved it. And then our last layer, so right around the front here, I'm gonna do the improved Supertunia Priscilla. And I'm hoping 
that because this is the improved variety, we'll see if one of the improvements is landscape performance. Hopefully it likes this spot. So I think we should start by getting all of these things in the ground first and then we'll see what kind of time we have and then at that point we can decide on what we want to put in those savanna urns. I've got a few, like we have all these annuals sitting out here in front of the chicken coop and I really want to like raid that stash and I can a little bit. Um, but a lot of that's going to our community college. So I've got a list, like I've been very organized and I know what things I have a little bit of extra of and that's what I'm gonna pull for these Savannah urns. Like who can keep out of this stash? I'm having a hard time. All right, I'm gonna grab the augers. Citrus are doing well, just as kind of an update. They're all blooming. They all, like the leaves look healthier than they did. I'm not seeing any shiny junk on them from the scale anymore. They smell amazing. And I've been really inspecting these branches. Like, see, there's one right there. So they're not complete. We're not out of the woods yet, but they are so much better than they were. Horticultural oil is definitely doing a pretty good job here. Okie doke. Do I really want this big one? Hmm. I think I'm just gonna go with the jumbo here. I don't wanna, kinda wanna use just the hand drill smaller one. I think that the drill is actually in back of the truck from the last time we went down to the college to plant. I hope it is anyway. Yes. Isn't this just such a fun area? I feel like it's really coming into its own these days. Like the layering is looking beautiful. Everything looks pretty in May though. Everything's so fresh and we are having an overcast day which is rare too so Everything looks extra vibrant when there isn't harsh shadows on it. You gotta hold on to those types of days. About halfway through, the sun decided to join us, so it is nice and bright back here now. First off, the lupins. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I love them so much. I'm gonna be really sad when those blooms are done, but I'll be looking forward to hopefully seeing them again next year. Lupins like more acidic soil than we have here, uh, so they're always a little bit of a question mark. Sometimes they'll find a spot they like and they'll do well, and sometimes they just fizzle out after the first year, so we'll see what happens. And all the hookera below the incredible hydrangeas look great. I ended up finding four around the pondless waterfall over there. So I was able to tuck one like right in front here, here, who it's starting to welt, I need to water. And then I've got a little one back there and back there. Oh, you know what? I was gonna plant this container. There's a diamond ball clematis in there and it looks like a hardy geranium that seeded itself. Oh, and a weed, excellent. I need to pop some annuals in there. This little area is gonna be beautiful. I've got the um, evergreens trimmed there just a little bit and I cleaned up the anemones that were starting to creep out as well as the tulips that were there. And then I've got the Wicked Witch Coleus. I used nine, like, yeah, nine of those. And two, four, six, eight, nine of the Helichrysum in front. And then seven of the Supertunias, which I'm not sure with this improved Priscilla, I might've overdone it with Supertunias, but that's all right. 
you can't really overdo it with this color, I don't think. It's so pretty. And you can see the difference in spacing. So the Wicked Witch, I gave quite a bit more space, and then the Hello Christmas don't need quite as much, so that's why that's the way it is. Oh, and I was noticing too, if I spin this direction, I think it's really pretty with the purple Supertunia and the purple Pincushion Flower, which will bloom all season long. And I did clean that area up a little bit. Um, I pulled out the Tritoscantia. I cleaned up some tulips that were in there. There's a lot of opportunity to plant some things. I need to treat the Limetta hydrangeas for an iron deficiency. You can see they're kind of showing the dark veins, yellowish uh, leaves there. But I've got some space in here. I can plant some stuff. I'm not sure what I want to do yet. So I just left it open. And then right over here, you can see the hostas. One is in the sun for just a little bit the woo -la, la and then the coast to coast right here. Doesn't that just pop? So pretty. Oh, also, uh, I was by the waterfall. I saw this sweet little Dicentra just blooming away, and nothing has been watered over there, so you know that these plants are tough. Decided to pop that one up and bring it over here. So it's coming together over here, looking really pretty. I'm loving it. Also, I figured while I was at it, there's a container on this pillar right here by the tree and I decided to pop just the tops of the daffodils out. So the daffodil bulbs are still in there. And then I used some of this new coleus for next year. It's called Elbrido. It's really intense. It's really pretty. And Dusty Miller and some Creeping Jenny. So I think that this one, it's just a really pretty blend. So you're gonna plug this end in right there, right by your where your uh, lawn tractor goes. You gonna help me to help you? Okay, now push it in. Coming. I don't know. Kind of sounds like it's disconnected. Oh, no, there it comes. Oh, man, the splatter is real. There it is. Just wanted to give you guys a quick view of what this area will look like and sound like when the fountain is running once I get the splatter issue fixed. That'll be pretty, I think. So here we are at the side opening of our cut flower garden. The Savannah urns were up by our front arbor, but we moved them uh, since, you know, the front arbor doesn't exist anymore up there. Anyway, I really love them right here and I'm excited to have some color. Now, all I'm gonna do is top them up with some fresh soil because we put fresh in there before we did holiday um, arrangements last year. Um, so they don't need to be completely cleaned out. And here's my total wreck of a gator bed. Look at all of that junk in there. But the plants are pretty. I was just looking at them though. If I wanna keep the obelisk in there, I'm gonna have to go pick out something different as a centerpiece. I was gonna use the plain the blue salvia but I don't know how that would look if I bumped it to one side because you see there at the bottom of the obelisk, you have to plant it, you have to choose a side. And while I do think it would fill in, I think it might have a little bit of a hard time with this. But is it really necessary? Do I need the obelisk? Maybe not, maybe I'll take him out. I think it's too short. Just because I'm anticipating all of the height that's gonna go on in here. And if I don't have something really tall in there, it might look to, look a little dwarfed. Okie doke, well, let me get the other plants in here and it might be just plenty. I may not need anything else. I think these are gonna be pretty. So I used a new lantana for next year called Luscious Citron, Citron, right there. I think it's new for next year, or is it new this year? I can't remember. Absolutely gorgeous. A Supertunia Royal Velvet, Supertunia Jazz, Vista Jazzberry. This is a new Vista for next year. So if it behaves like all the other Vistas, I probably only need that one plant for this entire pot but I'm hoping I can encourage it to like come out all the different sides. So we've got that nice bright pink. We've got a super bee nut, sparkling rose right there. It's just a really fun, bright blend of colors. And it's gonna be backed by 
like all the colors, <laughs> all of them. And there's that container there. And I will clean the soil off the edges when I water. And I think because we can't really tap into the drip tape to run drip to these containers, we've got available zones in each one of these corner boxes. There's one here and one on the other rectangle right behind me. So I think I'll just like trench a little line from one of those zones and come over here, pop up into this pot, and then just put the trench or put the line right underneath the pathway. Not, it doesn't have to be very buried very deep. And then pop another drip tube up into that container. Both of those containers are on drip right now and it's lovely. And so are the honeyberries up there in those containers. I don't ever have to water them. You are doing a great job organizing, Benjamin. So that is gonna wrap up this afternoon's projects. I have a ton of watering to do in the greenhouse and all the new annuals that we have over there. So that is gonna be the rest of my late afternoon and part of my evening. It's actually kind of um, part of our routine to walk around the garden every single night. And I usually, like, cause Samantha falls asleep in her stroller. And so she'll fall asleep and then I just carry the watering can around and I just water things and look at things. It's really quite pleasant. So we'll be giving you updates on all the areas that I planted up today later on in the season. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.